frog prints. There was once a king whose daughter was so lovely that even the sun was outshone by the brightness of her smile. Every day she was happy to play alone with her favourite toy, a lovely golden ball. She would bounce it against the palace wall, spin it on her fingertip, balance it on her nose and throw it high into the air and catch it again. One sunny day she was playing in the royal forest, trying to see just how high she could throw the pretty ball. Suddenly she threw it much too far. It rattled through the leaves of a lime tree and then rolled across the forest floor until it fell over the brink of a deep pond. Slowly, the glittering globe sank into the water and out of sight. What a commotion the princess made. She hurled herself on the ground beside the pond and sobbed and wailed and cried louder and louder. Oh, why did it happen? I'd have lost anything rather than my precious golden ball. What can I do? Whatever is the matter, said a strange voice. Stop it, pretty girl. You're breaking my heart. Looking up, the princess saw the boggling black eyes of a big bullfrog squatting on the edge of the pond. Its bulging face was right next to hers and she drew away from it. I've lost my golden ball, she sobbed. It fell in the pond and now it's gone forever. Don't worry, croaked the frog. If you promise to keep me company and play with me and let me eat off your plate and sleep on your pillow, I'll swim down and fetch it for you. The princess clapped her hands in delight. Oh yes, please do. It's very lonely being a frog, you know, said the frog, hesitating on the surface of the pool. Yes, yes, I'll play with you, I promise, cried the princess. But do hurry or it will sink into the mud. The frog dived deep and came back with the golden ball held in its wide green mouth. The princess screwed up her face and took the ball between her finger and thumb. Ugh. You you could have used your feet. But the gold polished up on the grass, and the princess was soon throwing it up in the air again as she ran back towards the palace. Wait for me, croaked the green frog, hopping after her. I can't keep up with you. But the princess did not hear. Already she had forgotten about the helpful frog. That evening at dinner... There was trifle and cream for pudding, and the princess filled her plate to overflowing. But, just as she lifted her spoon, there was a noise on the staircase. A flap, flap, flapping of small, flat feet. It was the green frog. With one great hop, it landed on the table beside the princess's bowl. Why didn't you wait for me? It asked, its head on one side, its eyelid blinking in the bright light. Go away. You're making the table wet, snapped the princess. You smell of the pond. Did you invite this, this frog to dinner? Asked the king. No, but she did promise I could eat off her plate and keep her company and be her friend. Is this true? princess blushed. Well, I may have said something. Then I hope and trust you will keep your word, my girl. The princess dropped her eyes and kept silent. And as soon as she could, she slipped away from the table and hurried off to bed. Wait for me, cried the frog, hopping down from the table as she ran towards the door. You promised to let me sleep on your pillow. The princess looked in desperation from the frog to her father and from her father to the frog. It seems a very foolish and silly thing to promise, boomed the king. But I hope and trust that you'll keep your word, my girl. At her father's harsh words, the princess began to cry. 
but it's so horrible, she muttered through her tears. It's so revolting. Please don't make me sleep with it, father. But the king insisted and made her pick the slimy frog up between her fingers. But when she reached her bedroom, the princess threw it down on the sofa. You can sleep there and don't move. The frog watched the pretty princess with his sad, blinking eyes as she got ready for bed. Do you really think I'm revolting? he asked. Well, not really. And you did help me, so I suppose I should be grateful. Then let me sleep on your pillow. No, shouted the princess. But you promised. I said no. Then I'll tell your father tomorrow. I don't care. I don't care who you tell. You are not going to sleep on my pillow. And with these words, the princess blew out the candle. I'll cry, said the voice from the sofa. The princess lit her candle again. If you're going to talk all night because you can't sleep on my pillow, then I suppose you'll have to. But please, please keep to your side of the bed. In a blur of green, the frog jumped onto the pillow, its throat bulging and croaking. Kiss me, it said. Good heavens, no, shouted the princess. Just once, please, no. Oh, please, pleaded the frog. All right, said the princess, just once. But first I'll blow out the candle. Don't. I'm afraid of the dark. Just kiss me good night. So the princess closed her eyes and leaned over and kissed the frog quickly. It's all right. You can look now, said a soft voice beside her on the pillow. And there, stretched out on the bed, his head resting on one hand and his dark eyes gazing at her lay the most handsome man she had ever seen who who are you she stammered i am the prince of rana many years ago when i was just a boy a sorceress cast a spell on me to turn me into a frog. She said that I would be a frog forever unless I was kissed by a beautiful princess. And you, my dear, lovely lady, you have lifted the curse. Will you marry me? For I love you dearly. Yes. My prince, I will. Then tomorrow we must go to my kingdom and be married. The next morning, as the sun rose over the palace, the prince asked the king for the hand of his beautiful daughter. And with his blessing, they drove off towards the prince's kingdom. Everyone clapped and cheered as they drove to his castle in a shining coach pulled by eight elegant horses. And the princess and her frog prince lived happily ever after.